Uh, greetings, everyone. We are now on the northern part of uh, the Zingwe village. Um, I'm sure at the back you can see the school afar and some villages. Where we are on top of this hill, we call it Etwaleni <coughs> Lagonkala. Etwaleni Lagonkala because uh, the Nkala family, they've got uh, their homestead here since around in this uh, hill area. That's why we call it Etwaleni Lagonkala. Yeah, you will know what he, as we said, Abandu Bawonkala, Namaswazi, they are of, of Swati origins, uh, the Nkala and the Maposa. They are one people, you remember, when we discussed that you cannot marry, if you are Nkala, you cannot marry Maposa. So I've got lots of uncles and cousins, the Nkala family, Simon Nkala, of Mani, Vurinje Lankala, Menford Nkala, <coughs> lots of them here eh, in this village. So on top, on top of eh, this hill. So it's on the north, on the northern part of the village because a number of videos that you recorded, they were on the southern part eh, where we were on those hill area. Eh, we said, remember that we said this southern part is where people farm, who are subsistence farmers, so we do lots of farming on the southern part. Of course, there are also hills here, but they are not as big as the ones that are on the southern part of uh, Mbizingwe village. So I'll be taking you around this hill so that you can see uh, the view uh, around this area. Let me try to adjust the mic so that uh, we start moving, you can see other places as we move. Um, <coughs> that's Etoren Lagonkala. These are some of the homesteads that are here. Mbizingwe. These are some of the fields. I'm not sure if you can see some of the fields down there. It's not the farming season. This is why Kekli are crazy in this side. I'm not sure if the sound of Kekli is audible here. I'm a Perengomo. Some fish they've started putting manure. And then you have this plant, which we spoke about <coughs> when we're in the southern part of Mbizingwe, Ufajamungwe, uh, which we said you use it for starting a fire. Yeah. So it to Alessa Kula Sidla Lagilo, Singabafana, during uh, this season, uh, winter, after the harvest, then it cake will come uh, this side. So we are going, going to get to the summit. We would also come and hunt here uh, on Jeku, now uh, Mazun Jeku. Uh, my cousin of Mani, Labafana Bamo Man, that I will tell you what he unjeku neskiwa yin or unjeku in English. So, as we can see in this plant, this hill, of course, it didn't play any role during the struggle for national liberation. There were no meetings this side because uh, kind of isolated, so it was going to be easy for the Rhodesian forces to locate the guerrillas, unlike on the southern part of the village. So we didn't have any political meetings here. But of course, people in the village, they do come. At Torenda Wonkala, they are Reds here which are running. I wanted to film the but the symbol went to the cave. Um yeah, that's that's the area. I was saying villagers do come here for their community meetings. 
So this area is surrounded by fields around these their homes and then fields uh, where people do their farming. So when this area was established, like I said, uh, between 1935 to around 1940, people had uh, their plots uh, in their homesteads. So a homestead is basically a plot. Then outside the homestead, you have more fields. So this area here, people have more fields. So people had more land to parcel to themselves when they moved in here for the purposes of farming. But seven zinkavi, oxen for plowing, so um seven zonzima, just two farming acre. Uh, and requires hard work. Um, remember I told you about this plant uh, which we produces that uh, milk uh, uh, juicy thing which we use for catching pets. Yeah, so you can see then across yeah, right, we are getting to the top and to the other side. So got that you can see the fields. I'm not sure if uh, these fields, this area where they are fields, is visible enough. Then uh, just about uh, 500 meters or so from here is the road that uh, runs from Mawabeni to Bulawayo. Um, we have to learn again, not any again, the uh, palace of the Zulu king. No, we also have any again in this site. I don't know why the place was called any again, but you we have to see a finger all to Bulawayo. So, if you are in Bulawayo, you use that road from the trade fair, a uh, pen site that's this road. It passes through all the Bulawayo. Uh, uh, it's not really visible. The one that is visible there from my camera, it goes to the village, next to the village called Doyana. So it, it uh, joins the Bulawayo road. So if you are from Benside, if you are from Bulawayo, you go through Benside, you pass all the Bulawayo, uh, then you pass Umzimwane River, this is the road. It then goes all the way to Mawabeni, where you can then connect to Gwanda Bed Bridge. Finally, Johannesburg or Cape Town. Yeah, but it's a dusty road. So buses are no longer really using it. Uh, buses, they will uh, <coughs> via, go via Esikotini because the road uh, to Old Bulawayo is very bad. I think you can hear the sounds of Amapera or Inkomo that are grazing here, cattle that are grazing here. That's uh, So like I said, this road which is visible on my camera, it goes to Doyana village. Then from Doyana village, you climb those hilly play, uh, mount, those mountainous area, Amakaka. To how mine you get to how mine so if you are in how mine then you go to Bulawayo yeah so I remember it was in 1984 uh, during uh, the genocide Kukuraon the genocide Inosinkala the late Inosinkala who was a minister of former affairs at the time I can't remember as an UPF member it addressed the rally in Esibomf which is about uh, 13 kilometers from where we are. Uh, yet uh, addressed the rally that site, and the uh, Inosinkala said that he uh, was going to send the Kukurawund to us. So in 1984, people literally walked from uh, to Haumain. Some of us walked to Bulawayo. Remember, I said Bulawayo is about. Uh, <coughs> 50 kilometers or so from my village. People running away from Kukraundi. 
that was in 1984. There was a curfew. Um, we couldn't get buses here. There was uh, shops were closed. We couldn't access food uh, in the shops because uh, according to the government, they were saying we were keeping dissidents in this area which of course was a pretext to commit a genocide against the people of Matebele land and the parts of Miklians. So we are affected by that uh, during that period, 1983, 1984, another story. Uh, if you see where that road is, where it is visible then, in 1983, uh, it was during this time, we were looking for cake. I was carrying my ball. As I told you that, we enjoyed playing football here. So I was carrying my ball. Then we were met by the soldiers. They beat us, beat us up. I was beaten by soldiers in that area because they said they were refusing to point to them where these dens were. Um, yeah, so I was a victim. I was beaten up on that spot there, there are fields there. And of course we used to farm. 1979, 1978 we were farming there. In the 80s we were farming in that area. Yeah, our fields are next to Amasi Mago and I give a reverend yes, Peter Dubewe Brethren, members of Brethren Christ Church, they know him. Yeah, so we used to farm next to each other. The Masming, remember, I said we went to the same class with him. Yeah. <clears throat> so that will conclude our tour of uh, Bizingwe. Then uh, that homestead, I'm not sure if it is visible. Uh, I'm not sure if my camera will be visible. Uh, to our domain now, what Magonyat, but it used to be a farm owned by white men called the domain. Remember, I told you about the farm owned by Malapula, which later on was bought by the missionaries. They first bought the first one called New Adams Farm, where you remember they were massacred 198 November 1987, just be a month before the signing of the Unit Accord. The next door was uh, a farm owned by a white man called Domen. We used to go and buy some stuff in the 70s. Stenga nge koron. It took pop, it took singies. That's when the koron, when we went to buy some stuff. So my grandmother would send me there to buy God Domen, which of course later on was bought by the Nyati family. Yeah, I was saying that uh, this video concludes our tour of my village in Bizingwe, located in uh, Umzingwane constituents. It's uh, about 23 kilometers off Mawabeni on the western side. Uh, we are under Mzinyatini, the region. Umzinyati. It was a military wing, or a military uh, era of the king, King Lopengula. Our, our chief here, uh, it was commanded by Machichi Kweb, Chief Kweb. So we're under Chief Kweb in this village. Mzinyati, then it in Asasembi Zingwe. Yeah, that's uh, my village. So I, I'm sure you enjoyed at least to see yeah, as I said, taking a break from <laughs> the issues around documentation and the hard uh, politics, at least so that we can talk together. I'm still wearing my cape of Zimbabwe. Uh, I'm a patriotic citizen. Uh, please share your, your views about your own place where you grew up. Tell us more about your own area where you grew up or whether you grew up in Soweto, tell us uh, what fascinated you when you were growing up, what games were you playing. I told you about our own games. 
that were playing um, in this village. So tell us more your on the on the games that you were playing. Whether you grew up in the in the UK, you grew up in Asia, in Mashona Land, in Botswana, uh, in the United States. Right, challenge ban bago kudlayo, la necho locho, and everywhere else. Otherwise, you have a great day. It's the fifth of august 2022 you might see this video late uh, but when you see it it is the 5th of august don't mind about this date <laughs> uh, i will upload it uh, otherwise thank you so much please subscribe to this youtube channel share this video with your friends have a great day goodbye